Hey, how you doing? We're going to do something super, super cool here. What if you've got some headers or text, say, on the right-hand side of your screen? And when you hover over them, an image appears on the right-hand side. It could be that there is already an image and new images appear over them. Or maybe there is no image. When you hover over some text or headers, whatever, the image then appears. And this is super, super easy to do. And there are many ways to do it. There's other people that have done other videos. Please go and find the solution that works best for you. I'm gonna show you one that works perfectly fine for me. So let's get started on it. I have over here a section, just a section. And I've put uh, just two columns, right? Nothing fancy there. Two columns, one section. In this section over here, I'm gonna drop in a inner section. And at this point, you're probably thinking, whoa, we don't want to do an inner section. It will become clear what I'm doing. And do use inner sections sparingly. Don't go over the top with how much you use them. This inner section is going to be full width and there will be no gap to it. OK, right. I'm now going to add into here, into the inner section, a header. In fact, I dropped it outside the inner section. Let's put it inside the inner section. There we go. And I'm just going to call it a uh, header one. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the styling of this. We're just going to style it like that. Blah, 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 blah. REM. We'll just go with two. Pretty standard. Nothing fantastical going on here. Let's now go over to the column for that inner section. I'm going to put in a spacing of about five. So when you drop in the text, it won't be spaced out with default 20 widgets, 20 widgets, 20 pixels even. Let's drop the text editor in as well. Whoops, Daisy. Let's drop the text editor in as well. So it's still in the inner section. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit so it's just two lines of text there. You space it out how you want. Right, so we have inner section one with a header and text. The reason I did an inner section is when I put the code in and the code will go into the inner section, you just have to hover on the inner section and the image will appear. So you could be on the header, you could be on the text, you could be anywhere in that area, right? Whereas if I hadn't done an inner section, well, then it might only work on a particular column or a bit area. I want it to cover the entire inner section. It will become clear. Stay with me on this. We're then going to drop in a image over, where's image? There we go. I'm going to drop an image into column one. And I'm going to pick this. Uh, in fact, we'll go with the line. No, we'll go with the line. We'll go with the line, okay? And I'm going to style this to be a full resolution image and the style for it, I'm going to go pixel. I'm going to make it be uh, 200. It's not a huge image, but it's a decent sized image. OK, so it's 200 pixels in uh, width, maximum width. And it's a square image, so I don't need to worry too much about the height. I could do the placement of it and all of that. In fact, uh, no, we won't. We'll leave it like that. Let me just hit update. So there we have an image. I'm going to duplicate that image and put the duplicate into the inner section. Now, if you're if you don't want there to be an original image and then another one appears, you don't have to do what I did. You don't have to put an image here. I'm only doing that because I'm going to have a particular effect going on. Now, this image over here, I'm going to go to style and I'm going to make this one be 400 by 400. So it's now double the size, right? A lot bigger. I'm then going to duplicate. Uh, in fact, yeah, do we duplicate it now? Duplicate it now. Yeah, we're going to duplicate it now. OK, I'm going to duplicate the inner section. Whoa, let me do that properly. Click on the inner. No, I'll tell you why that did that. You know, when you've added a drag in an image, make sure it still is in within the inner section because it actually had come out of the inner section. So just watch out for that. Let me now duplicate the inner section. So now we have another one. We're going to call that one header two. And I'm going to change this image to be a stag or a deer or an antelope, whatever you want, or reindeer. Christmas is nearly here, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to duplicate this in a section and then we're going to have a, a third one. And I'm going to turn this one to be a elephant like that. In fact, before I do that, I think I need to add a bit of spacing. So in a section three from the top, I'm going to give it about mm, 30 pixels from the top. And for inner section two, I'm just going to do the same there and go with about 30 from the top as well. So a bit of spacing helps, right? OK, so we've got our elements all in place. Now then, this image over here, we're going to go to advanced and I'm going to give it a class name and I'm going to call it Lion. Why have you called it Lion? Well, it's 
pretty obvious, right? And then I am going to go to positioning and I am going to now go to um, absolute, right? If you pick a fixed positioning, right, it will be fixed on that section of the page, no matter how much you scroll up and down. Absolute though is fixed just for where we've put it in your section. So I you tend to use absolute a lot more. The only time I use fixed is if you want a button or an icon fixed to the up, you know, top, bottom, left or right of your screen. And it's always there. It's always fixed in place, no matter how much you scroll up and down, which is great if you want that facility. Now that I've made this absolute, I'm going to pick this up. Look, you can just pick it up and move it. Now, here's the thing I will say, though. I'm going to position it over here. I'm now just going to double check that that is still actually OK. And I think it needs to move a little bit to the left there because there's a bit of movement when you're viewing it on a full screen. Can you see that? There's a bit of movement there. Let me just move it a bit more like that. Oh, I know why. It's because of my width of my screen. Sorry. One thing I should mention, though, and I didn't at the start, this section, the entire section, OK, is a boxed width of 1000 pixels. Why did I go for 1000 pixels? Well, if I had gone for full width, it can start to mess around a little bit with when things are appearing. So have a think about your layout. Box width of 1000 means I'm in total control of the layout and what it's doing. So to recap, I named this lion. I went into positioning. I put the position to be absolute and I moved it. I could have been more scientific with the numbers here and how I did it, but I've moved it there. I'm now going to go to the second image and I'm going to call this one stag. Again, same thing, positioning, we're going to pick absolute. I mean, I'm just going to position this now to be roughly about there. And that should be OK. When I view it, it is now sitting kind of perfectly over the line. Now, you know what I'm going to do with the elephant, right? I go to advanced. I'm going to call it L. I'm not going to put the whole, I'm just going to call it Elep. All right. I know how to spell elephant. I'm just going to call it Elep. OK. Because it's easier and quicker to write. And I'm going to now change the position to be absolute. Pick it up and I'm now just going to position it. Of course, be a little bit scientific with how you're doing this. I'm just kind of rushing this through just to show you how the uh, how the effect works, right? So we now have three items in position. But look, they're there. They're overlapping. I've just created a beast of a monster. Well, that's great, but it's not kind of perfect, is it? Look, this is not centered. So I, if I'd spent a bit more time on the placement of the image, you know, um, inside the column and the layout, you know, the mar the margins and all of that, I would have it a little bit more perfect, but I'm just showing you how this operates. Here's the key, key bit. We have named them, given them class names, but what we haven't done is added in any code, a hovering code, in fact, onto the inner section. So what you do is go to inner section one, which is this one here, right? Inner section one, you go to advanced and you go to custom CSS. And we're gonna dump into here some code. We're only going to do we do this per image, OK? If you did all of them in one go, they would all activate at the same time, which is not what you want. So what this is saying is the lion will be opacity zero, transparent, right? And when you hover, select to hover, lion opacity one. Does that make sense? So when you hover over header one, the lion will appear. Let me pick this code up. OK, and now let me go to the inner section for the second header, right? We're clicking on the inner section. Look, we go to the custom CSS and I'm now going to drop the same code in. But I'm this time going to change it to say stag like so. So now the stag will be visible when you hover. Now let's go to the third inner section. Go to custom CSS and we're going to dump this code in and we're going to call it elep like that. And straight away it's disappeared because now we've done it for all three. OK, so this code, really simple. There it is. It will be in the description. You can't go wrong with it. So for the lion, the stag and the elop, they are all transparent. But when you hover over them or the wording, they will become visible. So if I now hit update. OK, and let's just now view this in motion. Right. They are not visible. There is a lion. But if I go to header two, the stag appears. What if I go to the three? The elephant. Header one, the line. I can go to all of them. I can flick through them one by one, right? It's up to you how you do it. Bear in mind, both that you are getting a bit of a, um, because um, I've got a transition of 0.5 in the code, 
you can still see the little lion there. Um, there's a little bit of um, uh, move, and that's mainly because of the margin that you get in that. So this is where I'm now just going to revise what I did. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get rid of that margin there. And instead, I'm going to add in some padding of 30 like. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go with 15. Let's go with 15 and we'll go with 15 on the bottom as well. It's going to copy that and apply that style there. And I'm going to apply the style there as well. Um, so when we update that now, because because I did margin, I, I created a 30 pixel gap. So when you have a gap, as you move between them, you see the small lion again. So that was my mistake. OK, so. Oh. Darn it. I'm really silly, aren't I? Because look, I've gone and added in. Sorry. Right. So by doing the style, I went and did this. So look, look this is dead easy to, to fix. OK, let me just quickly do it. Silly me, because I, it then overwrites the code, doesn't it? Elep. Put Elep back in. Elep. There we go. Right. There you go. That, that, that was pretty quick and easy to do. All right. Erase. Edit, edit, edit. I won't edit it out, because I, I love you to see mistakes as well. So we have the lion, and then we have the big lion. I moved to the stag. I now moved to L. Now I'm not seeing the smaller lion. Notice that, because there is no gap between the sections. You move away, and you will see it. Right. And then you get this effect. And if I had centered them all perfectly better, it would have been a better effect. Now, this can be really useful. I didn't have to have three headers. I could have had one header and then one image change. So you could have had one image already here. And when you hover, the image changed to something else. That's super cool. Or you could have had a pr like a description. And when you hover over it, an image appears. So there was nothing there. There was no smaller lion. You hover over the header or the text and the image appears. And what's great about this is I, I could I, I can be on the header, the text or the little bit of area here. It's the entire section, just like over here. I'm now getting it. So I don't have to be bang on the header because what if they have to be precisely on a particular letter or a word? Well, you might miss the effect. Um, obviously, you got to play around with this. And whatever I did here in the desktop mode, when you get to the mobile, you're going to have to play around. Look, I haven't done it, but you play around with your margin, your padding, your layout and all of that. In fact, I would probably even say when you get to the mobile, you don't want to really be doing this. I would say you just have um, your text and then your images at the bottom, maybe, and just have one image or two images. Maybe these kind of effects, in my opinion, only really work well on a desktop. When you get to mobile, it's a little bit fiddly, I would say. You can do it, but it's a bit fiddly. I hope this helps um, with just experimenting with a simple bit of code there. Um, play around, have fun, and I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow, and I'll see you soon.